All right, listen up, people. Are you ready to appreciate the seething political complexity uh, of the current landscape? Are you ready to maybe hear me play devil's advocate for Pelosi? I know, I know. But Vosh, you say, isn't Pelosi fucking terrible? Yes. But Vosh, you say, isn't Pelosi uh, a, a stonewaller in the Democratic Party who consistently opposes progressive agenda? Yes. But Vosh, isn't Pelosi a dumb bitch? Watch your mouth. That's misogynistic. Take a look. Either, but let's not go into that. Yeah, you evidently do that. not respect the chairman of the committees who I wrote these I respect, bills. I respect and I all wish of you. you would respect the knowledge that goes into getting uh, uh, the, the, meeting the needs of the American people. But again, you've been on JAG defending the administration all this time with no knowledge of the difference between our two bills. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that to you in all person. Right. Madam Speaker, these are, these are incredibly difficult times right now, uh, and we'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much yeah. for joining no, we'll us. Leave it on the vote that you are not right on this, Wolf, and I hate to say that to uh, you. But I feel confident about it, and I feel confident about my colleagues, and I feel confidence in my chairs. And it's not about me. It's about millions of Americans who can't put food on the table, who can't pay the rent, and we represent them. And we represent them. And we represent them. These long food lines that we're seeing. Them. I know we you know are. Them. I'm, I'm just we saying. We represent them, and we know them. As we, we say, we know them. We represent them. Don't let yes. the perfect be the enemy of the good, as they say. It is here nowhere in near perfect. Madam Speaker, it's always the case, but we're not even close to the good. All right, let's see what happens because every day is critically, critically important. Thanks so much Thank for joining us. Thank you for your us. sensitivity to yeah. our constituents' needs. I am sensitive to them because I see them on the street begging for food, begging for money. Madam Speaker, thank you, you so much. Have you fed them? We feed them. We Jesus feed them. Christ. We'll continue this conversation down the road <laughs> for sure. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Thank you. Man, I had actually forgotten what an unbelievable fucking cunt she comes off as in this bit. Holy shit, she's so bad. Jesus Christ. I don't think it was too bad. I don't know how you can think that was anything other than terrible. That was abysmal to watch there. Holy shit. Um, now, I, now, I need to reiterate, okay? It's very important that we know. I really do despise Pelosi. However... There's an underlying problem here I was interested in getting your guys' opinions on. I mean that sincerely. I'm not trying to say that, um, I'm not trying to say that I have an answer and I'm sort of, you know, hyperbolically or rhetorically asking. I actually want to know your opinion, okay? So, let's start out. Okay. Listen, all right? Are you ready for it? Okay, I'm going to count off two numbers, okay? One. Two. In between those two numbers, 8 million American babies died because their families couldn't afford to buy food for them because there's been no stimulus bill out of Congress. It's still happening. Can you hear it? This country's aversion to supporting its population during a pandemic is fucking insane. It's, in it's sociopathic. It's fucking insane. Um... This would have been so easy if we had a functioning government. I'm not saying everybody needs to be paid 5000 a month, okay? But man, holy shit. Freeze evictions, $2,000 a month, people will get by. You get another couple supportive programs for some small businesses, you know, you uh, uh, maybe enhance some welfare programs. Did you misspeak when you said $8 million? No, because it was a, it was a bit. Just 2,000. 2,000 is not enough. But even if it could just be 2,000, it would help people survive. And we haven't been able to do that. When was the last coronavirus stimulus bill that we put out? What was it? What, what was it? May? How long ago was it? Yeah, M April. Yeah, April. A fucking million years ago. We, uh, we got the 1200 By we, I mean uh, you guys, of course, because uh, I never got it. Not that I really needed it, I guess. Um, and then we had the unemployment uh, benefits extension, um, yeah, with the 600 and that was it. And that was woefully inadequate. But when that passed, people thought, okay, this is the beginning. We'll be getting this like once a month now. 
That's what people thought. I remember the discourse back then. It was like, okay, we got a little bit. Okay. And we'll get it some more as we better now. Nope. Fucking nope. Nope, nope, nope. Not a fucking dime. Oh, of course we got, you know, the, the PPP for small businesses, you know. Oh, and of course we got, you know, millions of dollars funneled into massive corporations that were able to abuse the condition set for the PPP, or the, yeah, um, uh, uh, requirements, um, you know, the small businesses, what have you. But actual, real humans with their expenses, with their food, with their bills, with their evictions, nothing. And as a person in chat just wisely provided us, we're not dealing with a population that was doing too hot to begin with. This article was published in 2019. 40% of Americans don't have $400 in the bank for emergency expenses. 40%. 40%! 150 million people, give or take. 150 million people. And by the way, not all of the 150 million people here have 399 in the bank. Many of them have fucking nothing. And millions more have 500 in the bank. The cutoff of $400 in the bank for emergency expenses leaves a lot of wiggle room above the 400 for also being dirt fucking poor. Oh, nothing and debt. My apologies. When I say many of these people have nothing, I mean nothing and addition to debt. Now, why have there not been stimulus bills passed? Well, mostly the Mitch McConnell, you know, mo mostly Mitch McConnell. You know how this works, right? That shit has to pass through the Senate. Mitch just doesn't let it run. Now, there are a lot of complexities that underlie the specifics of the relief bills that have been um, sort of uh, posed over the past half of a year. And is the Democratic Party... Uh, Completely blameless. I don't think so. But that's not what we're talking about right now. Even if the Democratic Party was run entirely by revolutionary socialists, even if we got the Bernie cloning machine up and functional, and it was just, you know, uh, 300-something Bernies in, 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 the, in Congress and 47 Bernies in Senate or whatever, and they're all, you know, shouting over each other, you know, it's my turn to speak, you know, even if they're all doing that. There's really not that much we can do. We don't control the Senate. Mitch McConnell just doesn't table shit he doesn't want to have voted on. Mitch McConnell... At Vosh, nobody died during the Great Depression from starving in any relevant numbers. I don't think people are starving now. So, let me clarify. When I said people are starving, I'm more sort of indicating a general state of overwhelming poverty from being evicted to being undernourished, which millions of Americans absolutely are. Tens of millions, actually objectively undernourished. Now, do many people in America die of starvation? No. We are slightly more functioning than that. Slightly. But it was a way of hyperbolically indicating the broader problem. Now, um, with that being said, Bosh, this is a shit take that the Republican plan eliminates the earned income. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done yet, Pogchimp. Hold on. The, um, the issue is, Mitch has pretty much prevented us from being able to meaningfully table any solutions to this pandemic, any real stimulus. So what do we do? Well, the most we can really do as Democrats, again, this is all legislation. There's, this is only electoral. There's nothing we can do as activists. This is entirely through the framework of electoral politics. The most we can do is constantly push for um, constantly push for stimulus packages for coronavirus, for aid, let it get shut down by the Republicans, and then blame the Republicans. And that's what we've been doing for a while, and that's great. That's pretty much the limit of what we can do. Just hurt Trump, hurt the Republican Party. If, if Pelosi puts forward like, hey, here's a $4 trillion bill, that's not going to get tabled by fucking Mitch McConnell. But when he shuts it down, it makes them look bad. And the hardball here 
is how well can you get Republicans to hurt their public image in a time while the country is in crisis without making it look like you're being overtly political with your intentions? So, for example, if Pelosi put forward a $10 trillion uh, stimulus package, that's obviously not going to pass. That's obviously just a political bid to get McConnell to look like the bad guy when he doesn't table it. But if it's something like a $2.2 trillion, hey, that's a lot more reasonable. And balancing this weight, how do you hurt the Republicans without making yourself look like you're playing politics, even though there's nothing wrong with playing politics, you have no power, Mitch McConnell won't table any of these bills. It's all you can do. So here's the issue. If you remember, just a week ago, uh, the um, Senate Republicans stopped negotiating on any sort of stimulus. It's always been next month, next month, next month, and then they just cut uh, negotiations which makes the Republican Party look really, 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 really bad. But then Trump came out with a new offer saying he was willing to work with Pelosi. This offer is $1.8 trillion, which is significantly less than other ones offered, and additionally is really fucking cringe. I, uh, I looked at it briefly. Uh, going through the entirety of congressional legislation uh, can take a little bit of time if you're fucking lazy like me. But if I remember correctly, there are other things included in the, um, in, in the bill that are bad. Do you guys recall what I'm talking about here? Um, $200 billion less? No, it's $1.8 billion. Sorry. Um, yeah, they're trying to get rid of corporate liability for coronavirus infections of employees, if I remember correctly. Um, essentially, that means if your boss is like, hey, you need to go and lick that doorknob for me. You need to go lick that doorknob for, to clean it for your job. And you're like, what the fuck? Okay. And you get coronavirus for it. Uh, that's no longer something... They're no longer liable, essentially. Now, as far as I'm concerned... That is a fucking horrible deal. So the Republicans finally now, three weeks before election, Trump, the White House, not uh, Republicans in Congress, the White House comes out with a weak $1.8 trillion stimulus package, which includes uh, alleviating liability for corporations. That's terrible. But now... Pelosi is in a really tough position, and I know Pelosi looked like a fucking monster here talking with Wolf Blitzer, but listen to me now, because this, you keep saying trillion instead of billion? No, it's 1.8 trillion. 1.8 billion for a stimulus package is nothing. That's like 10 people, you know? It's trillion. Um, so I'm asking you, okay? Follow through with me here on this. With... With Pelosi, what do you do? Right now, Trump is desperately trying to push a weak stimulus package through in a desperate effort to shore up his poll numbers right before the election. And he's trying to do it in a way that would alleviate corporate liability for coronavirus infections, which is terrible. Terrible. After playing hardball for seven months, after the Republican Party playing hardball for seven months, is it really right for Pelosi to just immediately accept the weak-ass, half-assed compromise deal they offer in an effort to try and shore up his electoral chances right before the election? That's the tough question. Negotiating is really, really hard. Like, really difficult. If Pelosi accepts, and then it goes through the House of Representatives in the Senate, that makes Trump look good because he gets stimulus out, and it makes it look like he was willing to cut through the division in the Senate to get out help to the people, and it's very little help, and also he does the whole uh, removal of liability for corporations thing, in addition to some other crap. But if Pelosi says... Which So that's minimal aid to Americans, supports corporations in a terrible, terrible way, makes Trump's chances higher. That's not good. And on the other, and on the, um, on the other hand, if Pelosi says no, 
we want something better, it makes her look like she's playing hardball when the Republicans have been stopgapping this process for seven months. Personally, what the Republicans are playing right now is you don't get to pass stimulus aid unless we say you do. And you're only doing it right now to aid Trump in his election, and it will be a minimal amount, motherfucker. And that's a really, really, really tough, you know, uh, uh, deal. She needs to counteroffer something they can't accept. She has, but they won't accept it. They're just focusing on this, the $1.8 trillion. Okay, Vosh, but what about all the people who need the help? What do you think will happen to those people if Trump's odds for victory are raised by this and then Trump wins the election? See, that's the thing. We're not just playing immediate relief. We're playing long-term relief. This is a utilitarian nightmare. And this is the difficulty associated with negotiation. Every time you negotiate, you potentially give up a small benefit to bid for a larger one. And with the politics added in, sometimes the consequences of accepting a concession can be greater than the consequences of getting nothing at all. People are starving now. People will be starving in the future, too. That's the thing. Do you really want Republicans to be singly dictating the metric by which, um, by which relief is given to the American people? If this goes through, by the way, this will barely fix anything. This will barely fix anything. The, the same Trump, the same White House that is currently um, uh, trying to rush through this $1.8 trillion package is advising landlords to start going ahead with evictions even when their local jurisdictions say that's illegal. The Trump administration is anti-life. And this is a lose-lose situation no matter... Which direction you take? Do you take a piddling half deal that gives corporate freedom from liability and also boost the chances of Trump winning in the election? Do you try to play hardball and make Republicans look like the bad guys for only accepting such a weak and uh, concession-laden bill? Or do you flat out reject it and say, we're not accepting anything this bad, come back to us with a better deal, knowing you're biding down time until the election. If it weren't for the fact that the election was in three days, Pelosi would have pretty much no reason to not accept this unless she really wanted to, you know, uh, uh, try to negotiate for not getting that limitation of corporate liability. Three days? Sorry, I mean three weeks. Um, biding the time, I'd offer a counterproposal, put it back to them. I believe that um, Pelosi has. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, because this is still developing. Has Pelosi not said we want a better deal to the White House for the $1.8 trillion? I'm pretty sure she has. Yeah, that's what they're doing. And that's what Pelosi is being criticized for at the moment, I believe. It's all, yeah, it's all about the last one to refuse. Yeah, she's proposing $2.4 trillion, which is a 33% increase to the $1.8 Wait, 33 Wait, $1.8 That's an eight more. Um... More than that. Yeah, it's like a 40% increase. The deal was they wanted to cut the child benefit in the EITC. Yeah. Who would that make them look bad, though? It really depends on who controls the narrative. Dude, if the narrative, if the media was completely controlled by left-leaning people, this would make, this would just do nothing but hurt Trump's chances. Oh, so now you want to provide stimulus three weeks out from election, and it's weak stimulus, and also you want to protect corporations. Phenomenal. But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. I hate to say it, I think I support Pelosi hardballing because the utilitarian consequences of Trump winning via a boost he gets from a last-second stimulus bill could potentially end up causing infinitely greater harm down the line. It's also possible that since we only have three weeks, Trump will, in a desperate move, bid to actually accept the $2.4 trillion deal which would make the Dems look comparatively stronger, make Trump look desperate, and make Pelosi look like a successful negotiator, which again, fuck Pelosi, but also Pelosi being a representative of the Democratic Party in this instance, that does make us look broadly better. 
But there's also the possibility that they just let this deal stall out and actually Trump's numbers go up because Pelosi is maligned as a horrible sociopath for denying this one bill after Mitch has denied like a dozen of them. It's really hard to know. And it's hard to tell. And it's hard to know who benefits most from this. And that's why I sound uncertain when I say this, because if I was in Pelosi's position, I would also have a really difficult time knowing what to do here. Though I admit, I would probably not act to Wolf Blitzer the way she acted to Wolf Blitzer. I'll say that for you guys, though. That's true. Probably would have handled the optics in that interview a little bit better. I'm, I'm built different, you know? Um, that's just how it is. What are you going to do? Yeah, replace Pelosi with Vosh. That's what I'm saying. No, yeah, she sounded like a lunatic. And for her to be playing this very difficult optical game with, like, negotiation and shit, but then to also come off like a fucking loony talking with Wolf Blitzer, that's not... <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Um. Now... There is one other possibility, and it's one that I talked about with Kyle Kalinske, uh, or I guess I should say he introduced this possibility to me. I don't know if I believe it, but it is a possibility. And the possibility is this, that Pelosi should accept the $1.8 trillion because it won't make it through the Senate. There are some people who say that Mitch McConnell and other Republicans know that the Trump bridge is burning, know the sink is shipping, and they don't want to associate with him anymore. And for that reason, they'll continue to support their corporate donors by not adopting the $1.8 trillion uh, ship is sinking. I can never make a point with you people. You're just too, you're too cute. You distract me. The argument is that there are Republicans, including Mitch, who knows... Trump is fucked and is more beholden to his corporate donors than he is to Trump and to party loyalty and therefore won't even table the $1.8 trillion. So Pelosi should accept it so it can make it through the House to the Senate where it will fail. And that way, all of the harm only lies on Mitch McConnell and the Republican Party. Frankly, I don't believe that's what's going to happen. The idea of the Republican Party splitting with Trump is like a theory that's been tested time and time again and has never come to pass. I have never seen, there has never been an instance in the entire Trump presidency of the Republican Party moving against Trump. The closest we got was, was McCain right before he died and like um, um, Romney kind of like sort of performatively disavowing him in some ways. Yeah, I do not think that Mitch McConnell would risk that schism within the party. Can you imagine? Because this $1.8 trillion bill is being proposed by the White House. So the bill gets proposed by the White House, by Trump, and then gets shot down by, by, by Mitch? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, yeah, the, they want the liability protection. I think that if it goes through the House, it'll go through the Senate. The Senate will 100% not vote in it until after ACB is voted in, so it actually does make some sense. Yeah, but do you really think ACB is going to take three weeks to, to, to be moved into the, the court? You know? I, I don't think so. I mean, it's not impossible, but I think that it's... Uh, what's also very possible is that she gets moved in and then they're like, oh, hello, look at this $1.8 trillion bill. Let's vote to pass. And then that's two days before the fucking election. And Trump gets to, on November 1st, say, hey, vote for the, the, the guy. I gave you your, your, your stimulus. The, the Pelosi didn't want to give you the Dems. I cut through the corruption in, in Congress. I gave it to you. It has my signature on it. And then he could get a lot of just last second support. Um, which would be very unfortunate. Long story short, in spite of the behavior, I do think Pelosi's correct a hardball on this negotiation. Do you think one stimulus package could save the election from Trump? I don't think so. Well, there's always a chance Trump wins. That would increase the chance, without a doubt. It's just, it's a matter of how much and what the actual odds are. Um, and just play for time. Don't give them enough time to pass it, like support it at November 1st or 2nd so they can't pass it in time. Well, yeah, sure. Past a certain point. 
Is there anything I like about Trump? Uh, he got coronavirus. I thought that was pretty bog. Um, what about the Lincoln Project? They're clearly breaking from Trump. Dude, the Lincoln Project is like five neocons who are from the Bush era being supported by millions of dollars donated from Democrats, okay? Republicans don't follow the fucking Lincoln Project. Democrats follow the Lincoln Project, okay? When Lincoln Project posts fucking USPS fan cam or makes fun of Trump for not being able to walk down a fucking ramp, they're only doing, they're grifters. They've taken a huge amount of money off the top for operational services. The only thing they actually fucking do is Twitter post, but they've taken tens of millions of dollars and all that money is going straight to people who orchestrated the fucking Iraq war. They also give it to the GOP. Fuck the Lincoln Project, okay? I, 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 they, they are not meaningfully anti-Trump in any way I care about. And they have a history of stealing posts from other people en masse. I'm sorry, if I were to condemn them for meme stealing, I too must be burnt on that cross. So, uh, uh, that for on that one, I am agnostic. More like the Stinkin' Project. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey. What about the Gravel Institute? What what is that what does the based Gravel Institute have to do with the cringe Lincoln project? Can you explain to me what the relationship is? I don't know. <laughs>